This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into a reality. So, my curiosity question for you is, are you willing to sacrifice security so the dreams inside your head can actually become true? Okay, let me set the tone. Most people will never escape the pull. Much of the thinking around us is small-minded. Most people are overly concerned with beating out the other guy, right? Usually through manipulation and politics, and as a result, they're left fighting for scraps with the other 99%. A life of your dreams, your deepest dreams, 100% financial freedom, being your own boss, traveling the world with your family, whatever is available if you know where to start and if you know the right people. If any of this resonates with you, I want to let you know that I'm here for you and you're listening to this for a reason. This podcast exists so you can feel less alone in your entrepreneurial journey. And today I'm here with Ian Gray, who is a serial entrepreneur who lives with a passion for creating inspirational experiences. He started his first company in his teenage years and continues to build his portfolio. His first major success came when he was just a mid 20 year old and he keeps on growing. From then on, he has explored a new program called the evolved lifestyle and which we will dive deep into what that is but this just scratches the surface of who ian gray is so without further ado give a warm welcome to the one and only ian gray thank you so much for having me on thank you everybody that's listening definitely want to stay tuned for this entire episode i i have a strong feeling that we're going to get into some some really good fun stuff um and talk about some of the adversity that i've overcome and um definitely about how i've managed to usher in heaven on earth and and for me i definitely got to go through hell first so if that's where you're sitting right now that's great because you're actually on the path to heaven. If you're in heaven, then you're really going to vibe with this. So thanks, everybody, for coming on. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, thanks, Ian, for uh, taking the time to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the mission of the show is really to make someone feel less alone and also um, s- scratch your own itch, which to me is is that you have this problem with yourself, right? And And by solving this problem and being curious about it, and looking at it, hey, can I do this for other people too? Um, you you make something worth living for. So when I ask you, how did you get to where you got to today by scratching your own itch? What does that mean to you? So many different moments pop up in my mind and to encompass it into one specific thing is a little bit of a daunting task. However, I think I think it actually really resonates with um, that idea of a problem or a mistake. My access to my greatness lies in every single one of my errors. So everywhere that I'm making mistakes is actually just my greatness bottled up somewhere. So it's in actually celebrating the awareness of those mistakes that often reveal the hidden opportunity. Uh, Those those problems, as I I might have used to call them, now really just appear as 
um, opportunities. So when I listen to somebody um, like a, a Richard Branson or Elon Musk talk about problems, they don't use the word problems. In the boardroom, I don't use the word problems. It's, it's an issue. It's something to be looked at, like an issue of a magazine. And investigating that issue always, always, always can yield a great solution, which adds tremendous amount of value to everybody involved, which often, often trickles out to the entire world. So what's your main issue that you're constantly, like, what's that one question that you're trying to constantly answer for yourself? The, the one question that I'm always asking of myself is, is who am I? Who, who do I be? I, I, was, I grew up learning that once I did something, then I would have something and then I could be someone. So once I started a company, then I'd have a company, then I could be a CEO. And it's kind of funny because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a thinking that gets one, one trapped on that hamster wheel. And that's what it did for me for a long time. And it wasn't until I actually embodied who I'm being that the doing actually just happened automatically, the right way of doing. So it's always been a quest, since, since I realized this, it's always been a quest to deeper understand what it is that I would like to experience while I'm running around on this planet uh, in this, uh, this meat body that I get to drive around, this cool avatar that's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm kind of, for lack of a better term, trapped in, in a way. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I, I know exactly what you mean because I actually kind of want to go into this, this whole idea of um, beliefs and thoughts and simulations um, because I think that, it is sort of a game. In a way, if you hit the right buttons, you will reap the rewards from what you want. So um, your, your mission, your goal, I've heard, is to make a 1,000 people millionaires. So what do you think, what kind of buttons have you hit that really work in order to make yourself a millionaire? Well, it's, it's, um, it's really encompassing, first of all, defining... Um, what I, what I really intend to create and getting super, super clear on that. And then almost marrying it with my purpose of like, why is it actually important? The two kind of dance together as a, a priority for me. Um, and this, this allows me to get a true North or actually rather than having like a fuzzy target, cause fuzzy targets never get hit. Maybe, I mean, a random shot, but fuzzy targets very rarely get hit. So of really defining what it is that I intend to create and then the purpose behind it. So this way, um, it's beyond just who I am and the rewards that I get, but actually, how does it bring value to the people in my life, first of all, like my family and my friends, and then out to my community, and then out, of course, to the entire world. So once I, I have a, a really clear target and then I can see how it's gonna benefit me, everyone around me, everyone in my community, everyone um, on the planet that, that it gets involved with it or how it gets trickled out, then um, it keeps me inspired to keep pushing even when times get a little bit more tough. Because the truth is I, I already made my money and I could, just, um, I could just live on what I've generated so far and just invest in stocks or real estate or do something really simple or it wouldn't be as impactful. So I um, created Millionaire Prowess, which deconstruct um, 10 principles that I use every single time that I'm looking at a business or anytime I actually have a goal, to be honest. I, I came up with some of these 10 principles, eight of them actually, while I was racing motorcycles. And it helped me to get my pro license and go to the amateur nationals and become very successful with that. Then I applied it to my first job out of college. And all of a sudden I was making... Um, $14,000 a month living in my parents' basement right out of college at 22 years old. And then I, of course, applied them to innovation ads, uh, the advertising business that I had a goal of uh, retiring in, in five years. And I, my number was in, in the $4 million range of what I, I thought that uh, that would set me to retirement. For some reason, I thought that would be enough. Um, I guess I didn't realize how much I could actually spend. But fortunately, within three years, the business I had coupled with what I already earned, um, was near 10 X that number. So I followed these principles 
um, and follow them to a T. And usually what I get, actually always what I get is better than what I ever even set out to be. Because at the end of the day, um, my, my vision is only, um, only as broad as my, my paradigm is. And I don't necessarily know what's best for me. So a lot of times things come in, uh, if I have a target set, and that's like one of an infinite number of things that could happen for me, I can get real close to that target and then blast right through it to the, the next bigger one more quickly. And that's, that's what I teach in Millionaire Prowess. Oh man, you gotta let, let us know like just a few of the principles because I do think it, it having like a personal philosophy helps in getting you clear on what it is that you want. So, what are a couple of your principles slash personal philosophies that you follow by? Yeah, well, the, actually, the first two that anyone would go through, and they can actually right now if they go to free.millionaireprowess.com after this this call, they can actually do the first week for free and test it out. Um, the first one is actually around purpose and really defining why it's important for me to be successful, whatever I'm, I'm intending to be successful. And at first, I originally had creating a really clear target. And I found that many of the people that got into the program, they, um, they didn't actually have the motivation to create the target because it requires a lot of effort. So what I found with defining the purpose is it actually does something different than motivation, and that's inspiration. And when there's purpose, purpose drives one versus having to figure out how I'm going to do this and have to, the hustle's real, the struggle's real, like got to work real hard. I, I mean, I'm all for hard work, but it comes from passion and being obsessed, which is another one of the principles is actually how do I gamify and get really passionate about what I'm creating? Um, so th th there's three of them for you. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. No, I love that. Um, because I think it gives us a, like a place because people often talk about that. Like, oh, gosh, I, I got you know, everyone's saying to me, I got to find my purpose. And, and I really do believe um, if you want to be, you've got to do. And so it takes hard work. And if you keep hearing it time and time again, you may be one of those people, unfortunately, that keeps hearing it, but not really listening to it. And it doesn't mean that you have to like, you know, quit your job today. It just means taking a small step. Um, but a, a small step in the right direction can lead to huge changes. So um, that's that's really, I think, a great, great starting point, Ian. Um, what I'd, I'd love to ask you is, is this sort of like, you know. Based... Actually, before before oh, you yeah. do, let me, let me jump up? in there on, on, on the purpose topic. Cause For sure. Purpose, purpose can be like. It can, when I know when I was looking for my purpose, I was looking for like this one thing that it was, this is the reason why I'm meant to be on this planet. And I found that actually my purpose is a moment by moment thing. So it's who I choose to be that now I'm being purposeful with every single action in every single moment. Now there's definitely overarching like themes in my life and what I intend to create. Like I am here to usher in heaven on earth. Now, doing that or being that, being that space in every single moment now allows me to have a purposeful conversation with each person in front of me. It actually makes it so that every time I'm talking to somebody, I realize that they're the most important person in the world in that moment for me. And it allows me to actually do anything that I was doing significantly better and maintain my presence while I'm doing it because I'm purposeful about it. I'm not just doing it so I can check it off my to-do list. I'm not doing it because somebody told me to do it. I'm doing it because this is my purpose in the moment. That may be making dinner for my wife. It may be cutting up uh, sweet potatoes. I mean, it, it can be, I can be purposeful with anything. So if anybody out there is, is wrestling with what is my purpose, like just, just bring it down to the moment. The simple thing that I'm doing right in this moment, that can be my purpose. And as I started doing that, then overarching theme started to reveal themselves and it became this heaven on earth idea, which some people think that is crazy. And then they see my life and like, oh my gosh, you actually are living in heaven on earth. So, um, I, I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, no, thank you for outlining that. That's super, that's super rad. I love it. Wow. I'm blown away. Uh, just because... Yeah, I, I, I kind of like went into the matrix a little bit with that. I'm like going, wow, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking the blue pill. <laughs> I'm taking the blue pill because before we got on this call, uh, you know, 
I uh, got to see a little bit of, of where you do live, and it looks gorgeous. There's Oceanside, and it does look like heaven on earth. And, and I think what you're doing is this, this, this sort of quote pops out at me is, is you're not rich until you can create something that money can't buy. So you had the money, right? And then you had like this, this all of a sudden, this, uh, this realization that you wanted more, something that just money couldn't buy. It was, it was this being able to help a, a, a group of people really, and, and a tribe of people that are ready to really drink uh, this sort of juice that uh, is creating something that's worth living for. So I really love it, man. I love what you're tr- trying to do, and that's why I'm so happy that you're on the show. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, one, one thing I really want to uh, go into um, is, you know, how much of your desires are, are truly, like, your desires and how much are your desires based off of other people's desires do you know what i mean yeah that's that's an excellent question so um and i think this actually ties into one of the themes about people not being alone um to be honest with you i i I think there was a time period after i'd made money and after my ego went like way out of control which was a really fun, glorious time um, and even still more impactful than being poor and being in the dirt and not being able to take care of myself and just being super spiritual and, and not being able to help anyone, including myself. So, I mean, I love those times and I'm grateful for them. And what, what ended up happening, though, is I started listening to what other people thought because I thought that who I was was a reflection on what people um, said about me. And that they actually created me. So I, I spent, I also became like this ridiculous people, people pleaser. And I invested in businesses and it was like crash and burn one after the other. And I was just attracting in people that just were, had their hands out. And when their hands got full, they'd call their friends to help c- come over and, and uh, see if they could take a little more, more from the Ian Gray pot. And, um, I was completely asleep to what happened. I thought these people were actually my friends and and maybe they were, um, and in their own way, they were in this, this more of a, a victim mentality, which then I turned into, well, I could be perpetrator, which I didn't want to be. So I became savior and, um, saviors get crucified. Saviors always get crucified at the end of the story. (laughs) So, um, I had, I really had to reinvestigate in who I was being and how I was showing up in the world. And rather than being anybody's savior, savior or being a victim or being a perpetrator, it was actually about showing up authentically at who I am. And at the end of the day, um, now like all of my, my desires, everything that I create is something that comes from my heart and, um, or through my heart, I should say. So I'll, I'll like actually tune in to the, higher power and get real clear direction on what is next for me. So my, my whole legacy, my, everything that I'm doing now is, is for me. However, it impacts every single person that goes through it. So I do it for me. And as it makes me, um, expand, helps me to expand or become whole, which was a big part of the process was actually becoming whole and remembering who I was forgetting who I wasn't. Now it's all about the legacy. It's about what am I, what am I creating that's going to actually impact the world? And it really started with the thinking of how am I going to um, create a curriculum for when I bring children into this world that I'm excited about? Because I looked at the schooling that I got and there was, I mean, there was some valuable information, of course. Um, however, I never was taught how to think. I was just taught how to memorize. I was taught how to follow instructions. I was taught to be obey authority, all these things that actually, if, if anything, really actually slowed me down and hurt me. And um, I think it does that for a lot of people. And a lot of people get never, never have a breakout. So they're, they're worried there's got to be somebody to tell them what to do or they're in the people pleasing mode and they get stuck in that. And I didn't want that for my children. My, my parents also um, put me into uh, parochial school or like the Sunday school or Wednesday school, whatever it was, depending on the age. In Roman Catholic and actually the way that it was taught to me um, the, the Christianity from that perspective from the, the teachers it was it was really confusing to me it was like oh you have free will 
but don't do any of these things because then you go to hell. And I'm like, but then that's not free will. So it left a lot of paradoxes and conundrums and falsities and a lot of shame and guilt in me. And I ended up with this like Catholic hangover and I like shunned religion for a long time. And it wasn't until I actually got back to being spiritual that I could see the truths in the Christic teachings, the Krishna teachings, the Buddhic teachings, the yogic teachings, and started seeing, wait, there's a lot of commonalities here and there's a lot of deeper truths when not interpreted by somebody with an agenda. And I started to be able to fuse those things together and create my own sense of spirituality. And that gave me this sense of oneness with everyone. So um, I never actually I never feel alone. So my my creations, long answer to your question, my creations are, are really um, from my heart's desire for me. However, it serves all. Wow, 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 wow. That was awesome. Uh, that was really cool because I think it outlines exactly your core why now, like your current core why, because that could change, right? But like really your core why. And I think that it's amazing that you're just able to articulate that so, so well. But um, I spend a lot of time thinking about it. I, sp I spend more time in silence and introspection than anything else. And it makes me a little, it makes me appear for some people maybe as a little bit of a antisocial or loner. I have no problem getting up on stage and talking. I have no problem being in groups. I have no problem hanging out with one or two people, whatever it is. Like it, it, I'm just there. I'm just present in the moment and I have no need to like be the, the star of the show. Although it can be fun. The ego can, can go on a nice little ride with that. Um, but because I spend so much time in introspection and thinking about these things, it, it brings real nice clarity and my, my mind is nice and slow and I know exactly what it is that I choose to create. Yeah. Oh my God. You touch base on, on science, science, man. <laughs> Daniel Kahneman has a uh, book called uh, thinking fast and thinking slow. And the thing is, is he talks about exactly that in the book and it's the ability to be able to go in these theta waves to go into these beta waves and alpha waves at a curtain current situation so like when you're doing a speaking role to be able to be in theta we're like you know you you're rehearsed enough to where you're in the moment with the people but you're not over rehearsed where you're on robotic mode because when you're on robotic mode you're just in beta waves and then if you if you really want to like dumb it down where like you're just on complete you know, auto drive, that's, that's alpha. And it sounds like to me, you're just uh, a champion, uh, you know, at doing this, uh, going from alpha, beta to theta, and being able to kind of channel and harness your energy and switch over from those and, and not distinguishing because sometimes it can put you into a trap to say like, oh, I'm introverted, or I am extroverted. Maybe you are just someone who prefers that and someone told you you are introverted or extroverted. So now that you define yourself with that, unfortunately, um, that can also uh, put you in a hole and not let you really uh, step out of the hole when uh, it calls for it. But um, thank you so much for, for kind of bringing up that that knowledge for me just now. Uh, I want to go into scratching the surface curiosity questions because these are just questions that I thought of while doing research on you. And I'm like, you know what? I got to ask Ian these questions. So when you're ready, I'm going to go into those. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I'd like to touch a little bit about the, the, the brainwave states. <laughs> yeah, of um, course, man. And, and, and what you were, what you were I, think, I think what I heard was about like getting put in, I would maybe use the word buckets of like, oh, I'm an introvert or I'm extrovert. 
And I think that's all bullshit. I think it's all bull. It's it's this false illusion of separation, and that's why people end up feeling so freaking alone is because they keep getting and putting themselves in these buckets, but they don't really fit in these bu- buckets. Like nobody's absolutely yeah. conservative or um, democratic or liberal or libertarian. Or, it's 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 such a mishmash, but then they'll associate with this one group, and it actually limits their their perspective to see. So what I like to do is I like to look at the duality of it, um, and and actually say, okay, I can choose an option among from here at any point in time, and then it becomes like a unity of things. So I, I like to, to, to avoid the labels. I may choose to play a role at any given moment. I mean, this whole thing, this whole hologram is, is a stage. So I may choose to be the, the lead actor, or I might choose to be um, a supporting character, or I might even choose to just be an extra, or not even be on screen. And being consciously aware of that is where things really started to change for me when I realized, oh, this is not, not this body. I'm not my body. I have a body. These thoughts are not my thoughts. I'm just getting options coming in. And I'm actually the observer of these thoughts. Actually, sometimes I'm even the observer of the observer of these thoughts. And then all of a sudden I can go into like a deeper state of consciousness. So I, I don't get attached to any meanings that are associated with things which allow me to to be more in that flow state and just be me. And who is that? Then that comes back to that overarching question that I have to keep asking myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, but it's a process, man. It's a, um yeah, of course, it's a, it's very much a process and Anyways, I, I would love to talk about that subject for 14 more hours. Unfortunately, I want to move to the next. Um, yeah, yeah, give me the questions. So, uh, yeah, so the first question I like to ask is uh, this sort of like beliefs thing. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a giving givings question. So it's like maybe a thought that you had about yourself or maybe some sort of like thing that you did that you're a little ashamed about sharing or embarrassed about sharing, but – it's going to make someone feel less alone by sharing it. Mm. And, and related to like a, a specific belief? You know, it doesn't have to be around beliefs, but like maybe, you know, like sometimes, dude, when like someone's talking about something behind my back, I'll have this negative thought like, oh, they're talking about me wearing sweatpants in a grocery store. And uh, gosh, he's so lazy. Why can't he just put on some like freaking like nice clothes, uh, you know, and then it's just a negative belief that entered my mind about myself that is just um, where I'm at, where my energy is at the time. Maybe I'm feeling just like a little bit less self-confident than I usually am. So it's just something like that. Or maybe you have thought about uh, the way someone treated their kid while they saw, well, you're grocery shopping and you're like, you know, I'd really like to sucker punch that lady so it just just it's to prove that thoughts are just sometimes (laughs) thoughts you know what i mean yeah yeah well i think i mean into a into a deeper belief one that that has been um one that i consistently seem to spiral with and and it gets upgraded consistently however um one is is that i i'm not appreciated that's been a belief that i've wrestled with my entire life. And as a result of that, I have made accusations to people and been ungrateful for them. Actually, I stopped appreciating them. And this is like particularly come up in my romantic relationships where, um, you know, that's one of the things that that my wife and I are both super aware of. And sometimes I'll feel unappreciated. And rather than say, hey, I need some appreciation right now, I might lash out and pick a fight or pick apart um, something about her. And, um, you know, what, what's coming coming into mind is actually one time my wife and I got into an argument when I was in this state and I made a nasty comment about the expression on her. She's going to kill me for doing this, by the way, um, on, about the expression of her on her face when she has orgasms. You want to see somebody pissed off? That was something I was, as soon as it came out of my mouth, I didn't even know where it came from. It was just some 
crazy bullshit. The moment it dropped out of my lips, I was like, oh, shit. I wish I could just like vacuum it back into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I just I, I felt like the biggest asshole and the worst husband on the planet. And um, maybe I maybe still didn't haven't forgiven myself for that one. Uh, I think I've apologized a million times. So um, ho'oponopono. Um, <laughs> so that, that would be a specific incident where I did something I I'm, I'm deeply um, embarrassed about. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, geez, man. Wow. Um, just to show that transparency is, is a real, uh, it takes a huge, 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 huge gulp of bravery and I appreciate it. And one of the acting teachers that I look up to her name's Stella Adler. She's no longer with us, but she says, that it takes courage to really be affected by things. So I, I want to say thank you so much for being affected and, and, and taking on that. And I want to acknowledge you for that um, because it's not easy. I know it's not. And you're not alone in feeling unappreciated uh, and to share that story around it. Um, thanks, man. Um, the next question. Absolutely. Um, the next question I want to go into is uh, just a couple more deeper ones, which is uh, – What's a belief that you had about um, something like five years ago that now if you thought about the way you do things, you're like, wow, I can't believe I even let myself believe that garbage. Yeah, there's, there's, um, there's actually two that were intertwined that were totally messing with my vibe and messing with everything around me. And this, these two are actually the most common limiting beliefs in the Western culture, which is I'm not lovable and I'm not enough. And, um, I, I think I mentioned a little earlier about chasing my accomplishments and b being this machine about accomplishment after accomplishment and that gave me worth. And when I stopped making the, these, these accomplishments on the exterior, I started feeling, um, horrible about myself and I ended up making everybody miserable around me. And also that I'm not lovable. I didn't allow people to actually give me love and um they they caused a lot a lot of pain for me and and the thing is they were actually really easy to dissolve it was just actually around creating awareness for both of them that those were two things that came up for me that were putting up barriers for me in, in particularly in relationships which i mean relationships dictate how your health is going to be they, they it can dictate how your finances are going to be because net net worth is uh, close to the network. So um, they were really, really holding me back for a long time. And it was a matter of actually just going back and remembering moments where I made those decisions and, um, and reframing those, those moments. I love it. I love it. So uh, I want to ask you, though, uh, before we get into these sort of like quicker questions where it's just 30 seconds or less type answers. I want to ask you one last sort of deeper question, which is like one thing that people don't know about Ian Gray. Like like one thing, even on all the podcasts you've been on, on all the radio shows or TV shows that you may have appeared on, what is like that one thing that you think most people don't know about you that are a little surprised by? Mm. Mm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking for that, that lone one. Cause I'm such an open book. Like whatever comes up, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's like, I will, I will share it. Um, and I, I, I think if there's one thing that people don't know about me, it would, it would really be the amount of time that I actually spend in in meditation it's it's because it's so woo, woo so i don't usually really talk about it I and mean, i talk about introspection and sitting in quiet but i actually spend a good 40 minutes to three hours every single day in actual meditation just to really really get the mind on silent so i'm i'm no longer thinking and i can actually just channel in information from a uh, higher power. So I say the divine, somebody may say God, um, or source or universe or whatever. Um, and I, I think the amount of time I actually sit in, in quiet and, and that's where I actually create everything from 
in those moments of meditation and sitting in, in a high state of gratitude and things just automatically seem to appear for me. And I usually don't talk about it because people are like, oh, that's woo woo, that's crazy, you're out of your mind. And it, it scares some people for some reason. Um, I guess maybe because it's not provable. It's not, there's no empirical data except for when you look at what actually I'm doing is matching everything I'm holding in my heart intentions. So um, that that is one thing. And actually another thing just popped into mind was I have this unique ability to sit with my heart intentions, like hold a, a, a thought in my heart and get other people to speak it. I love that. Wow, that's a that's a beautiful skill, skill set, man. Beautiful. I, I really think that uh, because that makes someone else come alive versus just always making you feel alive. But it's mm. when you're able to translate that feeling onto someone else. That's when it's being able to have what they call an aura in the room, a true aura. It's changed because of your presence, and therefore their presence changes your presence. And so it's an actual conversation versus just a solo act. Um, so, yes, I like that. Yeah, dude, uh, well, you're the one who's doing it, so keep it up. <laughs> uh, I'm just. Well, it, I think everybody does it. They're just not conscious about it. Yeah. 100%. So it's, it's not. I, I think everybody really does it. Everybody has a unique vibration. Like, I, I know. I'm pretty sure anybody could walk into a room and know if some a couple was arguing in there. Like you feel the energy immediately. They could be completely silent when you get in there. You can just feel the energy, and it's a matter of tapping into that on more subtle le- levels that allow me to to be able to do that. And I think so. I think everybody's got the ability. It's just a matter of practicing it. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So um, yeah. I dude, I want to hang out with you and talk to you for like 14 more hours, but I want to go in these sort of like quicker questions because I just really love these questions because I really think it will round us out with um, with the right way. So the first sort of 30 second or less type answer is um, if you could sit with just one person on a bench, who would it be? Napoleon Hill. Nice, nice, dude. Solid pick. Check out Grow uh, Thinking. What is it? Uh, you probably know it. I'll, I'll put you on the spot. Think, think and Grow Rich, yes. and um, also there's a new release, a new release to check out Outwitting the Devil. It's on YouTube. Listen to it with a commentary. It will blow your freaking mind. Really? Oh, I'll check that out. What's it called? Outwitting the Devil. Nice. That's what I'm listening to tonight. <laughs> yeah. Check this out for sure. Um, the next question is, what do you think is more important, your net worth or your network? I, 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 it's so funny. I love these or questions because then it goes back to this separateness and duality. I think they're, they're one and the same, um, to be honest. And, um, yeah, however, if I when had you to say you love them, do you money, really hate them? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean um, though? Sometimes I get like that. I'm like, all right, it's not one or the other sometimes. Well, I, I, I feel like it becomes a lie in the answer. Yeah. Because now I've got this weird constraint, so I can't actually speak my truth. So that's why I, I preface it, and then I drop in my truth, and then I'll say, okay, now isolating it, definitely having the gr- great people around me is more important than having money in the bank. For sure, for sure. So it's a um, perspective. So where, where are you focused? Where do you sort of water the seed? You know, instead of the grass is always greener, it's no, how about we look at the seed that we're actually trying to grow right now? Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. Love I love that. Um, but I do want to ask you this question because I think it's very important that we know this about you is how do you consume your content? Blogs, podcasts, audio books, movies. What do you think really works for you and how you learn? So I was, I was huge on reading and taking notes for a long period of my life. And then YouTube came along and I watched a ton of YouTube videos, which then led me to go to to like all kinds of seminars and do workshops and, and do all that. So I, I like all of that stuff. However, now, like quite honestly, it's very re- rare. I might read a page in like the Tao or Marcus Aurelius meditation just to give me like a little theme. And all the information I get is actually through introspection and channeling and thinking. So um, now it's, it's, it's so much more enjoyable because this, 
I get access to information that that I never would have been able to piece together unless I read like dozens of books. Yeah, yeah, YouTube is amazing. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, what is one of your favorite podcasts that you're currently listening to that you think uh, someone should check out? Ooh. Um, you know what? I, I actually was just on the Nice Guys podcast with uh, Doug Sandler, and I've been on a lot of podcasts lately. Um, I, I really enjoyed that show because it was – it was they bring up he brings a lot of humor to it and a lot of playfulness and good content and that was that was really uh it was it was fun to listen to that one so i definitely recommend anybody checking that out but there's so many great ones like every single one that i've been on um has has been really great for its its own purpose yeah no i agree those nice guys i know i know of doug sandler i still want to meet the guy i sent him a message haven't gotten a hold of him yet and i actually listened to an interview with him last night and i was like god this guy sounds like a f- f- freaking ton of fun to just hang around with but i gotta get dude on. dude taught me how to dance to the thriller song like <laughs> he's a, he was a dj at the event i was at and he was just like partying the whole t- time just like always good vibes very east coast so i get along with him from my east coast roots um so um yeah very playful and strickland his his partner sometimes he's on there too strict but the, between the two of them it's just like stitches like tears rolling out of my eyes <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um so i just got two more questions to round it out but where is that one place people can find more of Ian Gray and and uh, just that one one link that someone can click on to sort of uh, unlock it all. Yeah, I would I would um, say go to evolvelife.com and we'll we'll get a unique URL in the show notes and we'll give you a fourteen day trial so you can actually check out for free or for a dollar I should say for dollars you can actually see this content that I've created regarding um, how I, I'm manifesting things with. Out money. You guys already have the millionaire prowess link, free dot millionaire prowess. If you want, want to make money, but this is how to get it. So like life is like life is just getting gifts, receiving gifts and giving gifts. I love it. I love it. So check that out. Just at one place, and I love that you actually do a dollar because I've realized that when you take in more free content, you just don't take it as seriously. So when you do just like something, when you have something in the in the game, it's kind of like you know. Almost people don't care about their time anymore. It's like, oh, I'm listening to this. It's it's just it's uh, free, and, but then all of a sudden you charge someone some something for it, and they, you know, it's it's difference of like going to college for you know fifty thousand dollars and going to college for like maybe, uh, uh, you know, full ride on scholarships. You hear about that story about that person that had a full ride in these scholarships about dropping out and actually like, not fulfilling their college career. Why? Because they're not really paying for it. Um, so I'm, I just want to really quick, I just had an opinion on that. So I needed to <laughs> speak that. Um, but, uh, the last question is, uh, the self inquisitive question that I think maybe someone can ask themselves throughout the day to sort of like really find, um, that, that, that true core why or something like that, or, or sort of like wherever you want to go with it. What's that one self inquisitive question that you think? can help people uh, kind of escape. Who am I being? Hey friends. So let me ask you real quick. Are you someone who's trying to get more visibility? Who's trying to be in front of the crowd? Well, if that's you, I want to let you know that first of all, you're not alone. Second of all, If you want to get on more podcasts, or ones that actually scratch your own itch, meaning maybe you have a book, or a business, or maybe you do speaking, or if you don't yet do speaking, maybe you can, and maybe you'd love to, well, I put something together for you, and in this little giveaway, I'm going to show you how to pitch yourself or podcasts and how to actually be professional when you show up so you can be the next authority in your niche so you can start scratching your own itch. I know what it's like to build something, create something, 
and then there'd just be crickets. No one wants that. You need to be seen. You need to be heard because you have a message to share, a message that is worthy of hearing. Podcasts nowadays, more than ever, are being consumed by people. And guess who's actually learning the knowledge that's being shared? It's podcast listeners. It gives you a license to be an authority in whatever area you really dream of being an authority in. So if this at all starts to give you a little itch to scratch, just email logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's logan at logantylernelson.com. Who am I being? Is that what you said? Yes, who am I being? And I, I, would, I would invite anyone to write down the different characters that they play before they, they ask themselves this question. So who am I being? I can be a, a father. And what does that mean in my fatherly role or the brotherly role or the son role or the friend role or the worker or the God or the speaker or the leader? Uh, every day, like every moment of every day is an opportunity for me to choose a different role in who I'm playing and actually consciously choosing that role will change my behavior. It will change how people will show up around me. It will change my experience in my entire life. So um, by asking myself this question consistently, it allows me to stay in my highest state of being for that moment. So my default is, for me, is the usher. And I, that is the, the one who ushers in heaven on earth with or without the permission of others so that others even experience it. So that's 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 my my uh that's that's my that's my high role that's my actually that's that's not even my default that's like my step above my default uh my default is king as king what do i choose to let into my temple i guard my palace i guard the palace of my mind i guard it of my heart um and i look at my sovereignty as an individual and my kingdom everything that surrounds me so that's my my king role but then there's times where i'm just the sympathetic husband or the, the 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 brother to my sister, or or my parents, um, you know, I can be the son to them because that's what they're craving, or the friend for someone. So um, that who am I being question is life changing. Awesome, dude! I love it. Yeah, and I think there. Uh, unfortunately, I want to talk to you for like I said, way longer, but we got to round it out. And um, I think a great thing is to ask yourself, you know what uh, you know who you're being and, and using these archetypes that Ian so beautifully laid out for us it's just you know take take that next step and maybe record yourself saying this in your phone because it's it's a person that actually like is vocal about it and that writes about it or, or you know whatever way they want to digest this information that's actually going to absorb this information so mm. um yeah please please uh, I invite you to do that and if you send your voice recording, which I know all of you have access to an iPhone or an Android where you can send those audio files. If you send that audio file to myself or Ian, um, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up with, uh, with an awesome gift, uh, maybe a $25 gift card from Barnes & Noble. So please do hey, that. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to one-up that for uh -oh. you guys. Add to it. Not one-up not one it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to it. Um, so... Name the file that you record this on as like one of uh, like a, with a zero a couple zeros in the beginning. Then when you pop in your car, it'll be the first thing that plays on the playlist, and it will be a great reminder when the Bluetooth connects. It's one of the things that I I ended up doing with uh, all my goals and visions. I actually, just had it so that they were there, their first and forefront. That is that is awesome. I love it. I love it. Um. So yeah, that's out there in the ethos now. So capitalize on it. All right. So um, I will uh, end it there. Thanks, Ian, for being on the show. And I know this won't be the last time we talk to each other. So um, we'll reconnect soon, man. Thank you, Logan. You have a great day. You too, man. Bye. Um
right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day, either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, If you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.